Are you in North Carolina? Sadly, yeah. <laughs> Sadly. It, where, where my sister goes to school is not the uh, greatest part of North Carolina. Which college? Uh, Elon. It's beautiful. The, the campus is beautiful. Like where she lives is like a country club, but um, wow. it's really nice. But the like town surrounding it is scary, but that's okay. It's hey, cool. how you all doing back here in North Carolina? Yeah, it's like very Southern. <laughs> Overwhelming. There you go. But, you know, it's a nice change of pace. I bet. My God. Some might call it culture shock. Other people would say, Oh, hell, you need to get used to that, girl. Mm -hmm. One day you might meet a real nice... Southern boy. Stock car driver, man. He's yeah. one of them rich boys. You want to get him? I know. <laughs> oh, God. Ugh. Sorry. Gross. No, that's okay. <laughs> I'm, feeling, I'm feeling silly today. Okay, uh, silly's great. I don't have any topic in general, except let me tell you about what I think the most important thing for men to have is called the right attitude. Mm -hmm. hey, do you happen to know who that is by any chance? I do not know who that is. Is it help? Okay. That guy's name is Clark Gable. He plays okay. part of Captain Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind. Oh, okay. I read the book, but never he, saw him. He has the right attitude. Just his body language tells you, okay? <laughs> See how thick that book is? It's not very thick. <laughs> This book is, this book came from this book. Okay. It was six pages in here, How to Have the Right Attitude. Then I re rewrote this book to this book, and I rewrote the right attitude, and I said, if I put these two together, nobody's going to buy the book. It's too intimidating. It's too big. So you can get this little book for seven bucks, and this one's 15. I like it. But I'm going to ask you, Mm -hmm. in the uh, 21st century, of which I'm not a part yet, I don't think. <laughs> uh, well, shit happens. Time yeah. passes by and life goes on. Tell me what you think the right attitude for a man to have is that you would consider uh, dating more than once. Mm. I think someone who is comfortable in their skin comfortable in themselves um i think someone who's just like willing to try new things and is like open-minded like i like someone who's open-minded but still has opinions on things but is like wants to learn about you wants to learn about other things but is very comfortable and confident talking about things they like and things uh, they know if that makes sense let me tell you what i think it is <clears throat> i feel like a teacher Okay, this congregation will be quiet now. A complex mental state involving beliefs and feelings and values and dispositions to act in certain ways in relation to women and life. In short, an unwillingness to take shit from anyone, confident in his own ability and intelligence to deal with women and life in a fair and honorable way. Mm. Does that work? That works. <laughs> Okay, in other words, more eloquent way, very eloquent way of putting it, but self conscious is mm -hmm. good when you're learning to be yourself. Yeah, that's after right. You learn, after you're comfortable in your skin, to use your phrase, you have the right attitude, you're relaxed. If they don't like you, well, some people don't like pecan pie, some people like apple pie, and you just move on. You don't exactly. take it personally, you do not take rejection personally. Yeah, agreed with that. And you don't, um, you just accept that some people are going to like it and some people are not. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. not a big deal if they don't like it. It would be nice if they liked you, but yeah. you're not going to do anything to win their confidence. That right. kind of, that's, excuse me, uh, my fucking allergies. Uh. <laughs> uh, it, that's what the right attitude is. Yeah. If you run into many guys who have the right attitude, that you would be willing to spend, well, I, I don't quite know how the dating world works now, but let's, in my era, I wouldn't go to long, I wouldn't go to uh, Carl's bed with anybody that I couldn't stand being around for hours and hours and hours at a time. Of course, yeah. I wouldn't go away for the weekend with you unless we talk, 
we like some TV programs we watch, we read the same things, we have some kind of a fit. And then I want to spend time with you. If I don't want to spend time with you, I want you to get dressed and go home. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's rude, but that's basically it. I mean, it's this, I think people take it, they're, you're right, they take it so personally, but it's the same as having friendships too. Like, like you meet someone and there's people you meet and you're like, you're fucking annoying. Like, I never <laughs> want to spend time with you. And that's fine. People will find me really annoying or like too happy or whatever. Like people find their niche and their group of friends. And it's the same with someone that you're romantic with too. Like, I don't know. I so agree. I think it's fine to say that about people. People are annoying and then some people are wonderful. So, it, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just the way it is. Yes. Yeah, it is. And it's all based on your opinion. So it's, you know, yeah, well, subjective. Your values. Yeah. What, mm-hmm. what do you value? Like I, I personally like women who are, um, what would be the word? A bit of a tomboy. Mm-hmm. They're not dainty. Yeah. You know, I don't like frilly things and little cute things and stupid <laughs> stuff. Like I like you to wear jeans, a sweatshirt, sneakers, and go for a hike. Yep. Throw, throw the ball to me. Just play basketball. Yeah. Goof around. That is a big deal to me. The other things I like about people is you can have a conversation and you don't get pissed off if I don't agree with you. You know? Yeah. yeah. There's nothing you take so seriously that you want to throw me out of your life because I think that uh, Joe Biden is a good man or whatever I think. Yeah. So you listen and you go, well, we have a different agreement and that's the end of it. Yeah. You don't try to convince people. You don't try to con- convert me. So to speak. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. That's okay. fair. No, I don't know if it's fair or not. That's just me. Well, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'd. Have you ever coached any guys to stop being so pushy or stop being so insistent about what you think? Do they listen? If they're my friend, like, it depends, you know, how much time I'm spending with them or, like, if they're a friend versus someone who's trying to, like, pursue me. I guess with guy friends, they're pretty responsive to it, but usually people who I'm friends with are good people. But then there's definitely been times where guys are just, like, annoying at a bar and then I confront them and they're just still dicks. So, you know, it's fine. I just, I just wrote, I just wrote a a chapter in my, uh, my novel. uh, As long as I'm selling books, let me sell my book. Yeah, you should. This is, I don't know if you can see this. This is a white witch. This is about a Russian sniper and her parents, uh, this is in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. She's hooked up with Pablo Escobar in South America. Oh. And they are training uh, paramilitary guerrillas to fight for the conservatives, fighting against the paramilitary of the liberals. This is all true in Colombia, and it's been going on for 50 years, and they're killing each other. Wow. And they get there, and uh, they're teaching her that there's going to be another world war. They think there's going to be another world war. She and her father are both escapees from World War II, uh, deserters. And so they teach her shooting and hand-to-hand combat, knife and all that stuff. But then her dad says to her mother, she's 14, and they take her to this really tough bar in Colombia, in Medellin, which is the cocaine capital of the world. And this bar is notorious for being a bad place. Literally, it's in all the books, it's even in the travel guides. Don't go to Comuna 13, which means neighborhood 13. The cops never go in there. It's kind of like South Central LA before they got it organized. The cops are afraid to go in there. You know, we'll get killed. So it's a, it's even worse in Colombia. Anyway, they decided to take her to the bar there and let her have a taste of what uh, boys are like when what men are like when they act like boys, which is when they're drinking. So <laughs> I thought you'd probably agree with that one. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> so they get in there and they get into some hassles and have fun and get into fights. Anyway. Men in bars are different than men at a, well, a sorority tea. That's a little bit too much difference, but let's see. Yeah, no, no, no. Than at a tailgate. Yep, 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 yep. For some reason in bars, they adopt a persona that's, uh, oh, what do I say? They have to be more than they are. They, they're kind of 
I don't know. Hey, everybody look at me. The best they can do, even if yes. they're yeah. So I don't know how you deal with that. How do you deal with that? You can't write everybody off, then you wouldn't have anybody to talk to. That's, no, that's very true. Um, you have to give, I, I try to give some people like a little bit of time for the most part. And you people, when they go out, they, you're right. They try to put like their, their best self forward, I guess they're dressed up. Like, you know, the rare times I decide to wear makeup are usually like when I go out and like put on a dress or something. And it's the same for guys too. And I think they like kind of have this like suave persona you know they're like sitting at the end of the bar and it's like okay but sometimes when you start to talk to people you realize like oh they're just they're normal it's fine yeah. um and then there's other people you talk to who are weird i don't know i think you have to give i like to give everyone like at least a few minutes try and talk to them and not all girls are like this like some are some are may, way more superficial and we'll just you know go based off of looks or like you know it's fine. And sometimes some pe girls are just going to hang out with their friends. But like, if I'm planning on like maybe meeting people, I'll give everyone a little bit of time. And if we hit it off, then I'm going to hit it off. I think it's almost exactly the same when you, when you mentioned friends. It's about the same filter you're pushing them through. Uh, you don't pick friends who act like assholes. You don't pick loud, hey, everybody look at me for friends. You pick people that are, that fit in your comfort zone, whatever that is. Happy. Yeah. Uh, sports oriented, intellectual, whatever you, whatever right. pursuits you're interested, in, but not other people. Mm -hmm. So, are you a maid of honor? Oh, no, you're graduating. I see. Graduating. You, you want to see my sister? Can she come sure. say hi? Come say hi. Here, I'll put it off for a second. Bend down so I can see you. There you go. Great. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. I hear all kinds of stories about you. I think they're probably all true. <laughs> Only good things. Okay. She said you're like her, only different. Yep. It's actually very valid. Which is kind of vague and kind of confusing, but it's also very accurate. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll let you guys get back to your question. You have a job. Ask it. What's your sister's name? Oh, Kat. Kat, do you have a job yet? No, I don't. I'm. Darling. She should take my place at the Ox. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to get out of it. Yes, that is. I think I went a little bit of a different career path for my first job than working at the office. No, very fair, yeah. very fair. Okay, well give her, if you read the book Office Politics I gave you, give it to her if she's going out in the business world. I'll give it to you, Kat. Okay, they're off. they're off to finish packing, but she just wanted to say hi. That's okay, that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Did you buy those little white things that hang out your ear? To the ear pods, I can't, I just think they're, they're so much better. I know they're so much better, but I'm just like, I can't spend the money on them. I think that you look like an idiot with a Bluetooth I, in your ear. I, I agree. Like, and it's just like, uh, I don't know. I see everybody with them. And I'm guessing it's a status symbol. It must be like. It is. No, it is. Making sure your iPhone is sticking out, your iPhone 10 sticking out your back pocket. It, that's kind of how I feel. The only, the only reason I would get them is I think they're nice if you're working out because you don't have to deal with like. If you're like yeah. on the treadmill and these are like all up in your face. What, well, first let's start with the upper age limit of anybody you would be interested in going out with the second time. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a number? 55, 45, 35, 25? Uh, probably at this age, like 33. Okay. 10 years is kind of like my... And what would he have on to get your attention the first time? He would say, wow, I like that guy. What, what does he have on? What's the perfect outfit for you? Oh, that's hard. It's hard to put a, I don't know, I think a nice, like, like nice jeans, maybe. Nice shoes and, like, a nice button-up, kind but of. Button-up is a shirt. Yeah. Here. Okay. Maybe I can try and find a, a picture of something. But I don't know. I think someone who just looks kind of a little bit put together. I don't like someone who's a little too like messy, if that makes sense. Like if you're out yeah. and about, I don't know. Let's see, maybe I'm gonna I'll find something. But yeah, but also something that's like 
something where you're not trying too hard either. <laughs> like, don't wear a suit to a bar unless you're like coming straight out of work with like your other friends or something. But <laughs> don't need to see you in a suit. The one girl I, I dedicated the, the Young Women book to was uh, uh, 20, 20 years old. And um, I was with her for four years. And mm-hmm. She gave me lots of insights, and she said the funniest thing is that when a guy, on a first date, when a guy tries too hard by the way he dresses. Yeah. She says, that just means I've got him. And I don't have to do anything. No, it's true. So, so That's yeah. actually very, in- no, no, no. Yeah, I yeah. You can't be sloppy. You can't be too neat. The thing she really hated was what she called uh, uh, contrived casual. Yeah. Can you imagine what that is? She would point yeah, out. No. He would point them out to me. He's trying so hard to look casual. It, no, it, it, that, yeah. And there's a lot of flexibility in that. Like, yeah. I, I like people to be true to themselves, too. Whatever you yeah. People have different types of um, fashion, you know, aesthetics, and they, they like different things. And you can find something that's you, but just kind of in the middle ground. Bomber jackets. I don't know. I'm just going to get a picture of this. Like, these jackets, oh, it's too bright are so nice. In any color, bomber jackets look so good on guys. So that's one thing I like. It's not leather, is it? No, it's like, they come in different materials, but like, they're, they're just, they're nice jackets. You like a short collar, short waist, waist, wait. Hey, it's these new teeth. Uh-huh. Waist length, waist length jackets. Yeah, they're actually, they look, they look very flattering. Okay. Um, I don't know, a nice sweater can be nice too, depending on the time of year. And just like be color coordinated. What's the worst? What's the worst color coordination? What's the way? What two colors would turn you off the most? Like red and green, or something. Like it's not Christmas, or it's not like if you're gonna. I think bright colors are cool, but then you have to like subdue it with like something very simple. A jacket that covers it up. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Just I don't know. Just like no colors. Like like blues are always really nice. Navy blue with like whites, browns. Always a safe safe way red can be very nice too but then you have to do something like black or like or red and red and white is too much too i've seen that only on valentine's day yeah like red if you do like a red shirt and white pants that's like a no that's a no no <laughs> but i don't think we have to tell my guys that i, don't I think they're fine but yeah just something like i don't know Let jeans me tell you. and like jeans jeans and a nicer top and nicer shoes i think is usually a good way to go okay uh, some of the things the girls over the years I've hired to work in the workshops hate more than anything. A lot of them hate uh, guys that wear work boots mm. for no apparent <laughs> reason. Yeah. You're a computer yeah. expert. What the fuck are you doing with work boots? No, that's actually really funny. It's like um, they don't, they just, it doesn't fit anything there. If you're a lumberjack, you can do that. But if you're. Yeah. No, I can see that. I, 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 I it's weird because. Like my generation, fashion's gotten kind of weird. I know it is, but I'm just like, trying to warn the guys about some things. That I know make it's it. hard because like it's everything's in in a weird way. Like Doc Martens have made a huge comeback, and there's kind of like this like grunge <laughs> I, boot I look. I remember those from when my daughter was 15, and I said, "Yeah, you want combat boots? What the fuck for?" And everyone wears them, guys and girls, and it's like, yeah. E- so, and it, there was a period of time where like maybe like a few years ago where people were wearing like lumberjack boots. And that was the thing. Like a lot of guys yeah. and even girls had them. And I was like, I, I don't know. I'm not super picky, but I can see how it's kind of annoying. I think tennis shoes, like nice sneakers are, are always a safe bet too. Like nice white sneakers or like nicer, nicer pair of sneakers. Not like, I don't know. Let me try one other thing that fascinated me. And I never noticed it until they told me. They said, yeah. I a guy that has Nike shirt, and Adidas pants. <laughs> the clash of the brands. But you don't like that. And yeah. they're both blue, and one's silver and blue, and one's blue. And I'm going, well, they said, no, no, the label, you've got, the labels have to match. You can't. Yeah. Is that a deal? I, for me, no, to be honest, though, actually, the one fashion trend I'm not a huge fan of is like this athleisure, as people like to call it. Like, they wear a lot of like athletic clothes, like Adidas and Nike. That I'm not very into. So I would say I wouldn't really like that on anyone, like anybody. I don't like gym. I don't like when guys wear gym shorts out or like, 
a Nike t-shirt and like Nike shoes or Adidas shoes. I don't really, but I could see how the clash could be kind of like confusing. I just, That's, I, I don't I, think it matters that much. I never noticed until they pointed it out. Yeah, I don't think I've ever noticed. And my daughter says they're label whores. Uh, yeah, no, that's, I think that's a very good, like, I never tell, like that's that. a telling sign. Like, I never noticed brands like that. I'm just like, but if someone, like, I think there's just something a little bit sloppy about wearing, like, athletic clothes. Because it looks like you've come from the gym, which is fine if you have, but, like, yeah, right. don't wear it out. At 8, like, 8 30 in the bar. Mm. Where'd you come from? Exactly. It's, I'm like, I don't know why you're wearing this. I'm with you on that, yeah. Yeah. The thing I don't, well, first I'll tell you a story. I was dating this girl, uh, Violet, beautiful mm -hmm. girl. Uh, I didn't know what she had on that night. I picked her up at her house, and we were coming over here, and we were in my garage, and I had an old car parked there, and there's only room for one car and a little bit of space on both sides, so. She got out her side, I got out my side, and I'm going around to get something out of the trunk, and she's walking up her side toward the front of the garage out to the house. And she steps up on the step, and she has on these, I've never seen them before, these really skin-tight yoga pants. Uh -huh. And my, I couldn't help myself. I said, oh, my God, what are those? <laughs> and she turned around, she looked at me, she says, you like them? I said, Jesus, yes. She said, they're yoga pants. I only wear them when I'm going to yoga class or coming from yoga class. That was a long time ago because they wear them everywhere. Every, everywhere now. What really pisses me off are fat chicks wearing them. Hey, girl, when it goes above size six, you're out of it. No, you can't wear those. They're can't so wear. comfortable. I, they might be, but God, they look like somebody spray painted your pants on. That's just some of my mother's coming out of me. That's just, that's just crude. Yeah, it's, and I don't know, the whole yoga pants trend thing is, that's still, I, I don't know, I think people do it because it's comfortable, but. They have my attention every time. Yeah, they, I think a lot of guys say that, and it's fine, but <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's interesting because I think there's certain things on, like when I hear guys talk about what looks really good on a girl, like they have more specific answers, like yoga pants are always in there, and I'm like, okay, because they want to see the butt and I'm like that's fine but like and then they're like certain dresses they really like to and then they're like yeah and then like jeans and a t-shirt they're like that always looks so classic and good I'm like okay so oh, I agree whereas, for, whereas for guys it's different I think, I, just, I think guys have to like you said be comfortable in your skin and be comfortable with what you're wearing you can't be What's the word? I'm self-conscious about what you have on. If you're not comfortable in it, don't wear it. If you feel mm -hmm. like it's too dressy, don't wear it. If it's too sloppy, don't wear it. Whatever you have to feel comfortable, and then you radiate, I'm comfortable in my own skin. If, mm -hmm. you're, if you're trying to have your tie just right, everything just tits, and you're worried about it, you come across like, am I good enough? Which yeah. Definitely a woman's turn off. Yeah, you won't. No, you're not good enough. <laughs> you, yeah, you just gotta go for it. Yeah, be, be yourself. Put it on, be confident, and then. Do the best you can. If you're not used to wearing suits and ties, get used to it because when you go to a wedding, you better be comfortable in that suit. Yes, yes. You can't go in there acting like a damn hick. Yep, uh, yeah, that's true. Very true. Are you going to a dance tonight? Or is there any kind of an event after the graduation? Um, my sister's, so the graduation's tomorrow. I know she's going like hard tonight, her and her buddies. Yeah, and that's what I'm, you're gonna have fun tonight. I told her to. Um, and then tomorrow I think we're doing, her friends are having like a party for all the, for like family too. So we're all gonna yeah. go to that afterward. Okay, that'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be very nice. Mr. Wright might be there. You never know. You never know. I better dress to impress. <laughs> dress you like yourself. Yes. You know, you I know. always do. Don't worry. Yeah, that, yeah, I'm always, know. and I'm, I don't know. I wear, you also have to, you have to wear clothes for yourself, like a little bit too. Like there's definitely been times like I, I've worn things and my mom's like, oh, I don't like that shirt. I'm like, well, you know what? I do like it. And unless it's like, Many people are telling you like that just doesn't look good on you or like yeah. your friend, you know You can wear wear things for yourself. I always ask a bunch of people because I you know 
Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm with you. I need some feedback to figure yeah, out where I am. Yeah, yeah. But, like, there, there's some people just, like, you don't need to impress everyone. And as long as you like it and you feel comfortable in it, you know, you're fine. Fashion's, you know, it's used to kind of represent a bit of you sometimes, too. So. Well, you have to express yourself. Women like... <laughs> Uh, women like a man to wear a sort of a uniform that expresses what he is. For example, in the first issue of this book, I wrote a big long section about mm. if you don't know what you're doing, get my book Dress for Success with Women and master all the skills, it's the colors and the fit mostly. Okay. Once you get that down, and I want you to express yourself. If you're a GQ model who just hasn't been discovered yet, dress that way. If you're a yeah. tennis bum, dress like a tennis bum. If you're a surf bum, dress like a surf bum. Yeah. If you're a, whatever you are, be yourself. If you're a truck driving cowboy with a big hat, do it. Because yeah. you don't want women attracted to you because you're something you're not, not like. dressing like yeah. you, your real self. Yeah. So it gets complicated. Then she starts... You get together and then you want to wear your cowboy hat. And she says, no chance, Jack. I'm not going anywhere with that. Mm, so, it's true. And everyone I, likes everyone likes different things. So it yeah. doesn't matter anyway. Visit like, yourself and enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, goodness. Do you have anything you want to share with the world? Uh. <laughs> Trying to think. Hundreds of people are watching you, by the way. I, are they? Yeah. I watched the last one, so you should be proud of me. Oh, I, I sat through it. Yeah. Because they're, you know, I have to take time. They're long, so oh, I'll okay. watch. I have time these next few days. I'll watch a few more. What I wanted you to see was how authentic you are. That's mm -hmm. what everyone's reacting to. In my, because real people are just so goddamn rare. Mm. In today's world, that I agree with that. Agree when you're with that. when you're yourself, it's a magnet to people. Mm, that's nice. Yeah, when you're when you're true and real, and not phony, and you say what you think and back it up, everybody mm -hmm. respects that. Some people don't like it because they can't manipulate you. So they yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't yeah. work. But you don't need manipulators in your life. Yeah. Oh goodness. I do have a funny story. Tell us. It's we really, know. this is something story big, big no-no never to do this. I don't think I've told this on here yet, but um, there was one time I, one of my best friends and I were out on the town in a bar and my one friend thought this guy was really cute. And she's like, we're actually, to be honest, both of us are like not very good flirts unless we have like a few, few drinks in us. But um she was like, oh, can you go and, like, talk to him? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll get him to come talk to us. Don't worry. So I went up, and I was like, hey, like, what's your name? We introduced ourselves. And I was like, this is my best friend, you know, blah, 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 introduced him. He's like, oh, he's like, oh, how long have you guys known each other? I'm like, oh, we've been best friends since, like, the fourth grade. Like, we grew up together. And he's like, oh, awesome. And he's like, so you guys have seen each other naked? And I was like, oh, my God. That's the first thing he said. And I was like, okay, well, goodbye. <laughs> my friend and I just walked away. I was like, what? Uh, isn't that horrible? I was like, I hate, I hate this. You remember when we were doing that video about the dating show? Yes. Oh, it's like the guy. Yes. The yeah. creepy guy with weird jokes. Like, no, the guy just stuck his tongue out. Oh, that one too. Yeah. The, the, the lick. What the <laughs> fuck? They must've learned that from pickup artists. I mean, so this, weird. this bullshit of getting naked into the conversation and step one. What the fuck? You know what I mean? Come on. It's so Stop weird. Cool. It's, it's so going to turn people off. But it does. Also, it's like, I don't know, in a way, I think it's, it's more attractive to not even talk about that stuff because it's like, it's more of a mystery. You know what I mean? And it's like, and then when it happens, there's just like, you know, it, you know, there's passion and it's not like, it's not like made up. It just happens if it's meant to happen. And if you have good chemistry, you won't have to worry about it. But like, when you talk about it all the time, you keep bringing it up, it makes you less likely to want to do anything. So I'm just like, what? goodbye. What? One of the really nice people I grew up with, uh, she was about 40 when I was about 20. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, 
the boys that talk about sex all the time aren't getting any. It, yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was like 19 fucking 50. Okay, 60. I mean. <laughs> and it's still true. It's still true. So it's, true. Uh, if you're talking about it, you're not doing it. <laughs> yeah. So simple. So. Yeah. Oh, that's always a good tip off. Yeah. I so guys, that. you're paying attention, guys. If you read my book, God damn it, read my book. Solve a lot of problems. Here it is. Here's the old one. It's, it's all sold out. In, this is the last one in the world. This is a new one. I've added 50 pages for you. Number one, be yourself. Number two, have the right attitude. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know what the fuck I was saying before that. There's something else that's important. <laughs> what were we talking about just before I said that? In uh, the, getting naked? Yeah. Sex, uh, sex and all that good stuff? Yes. Maybe talk about sex. One of, the, one of the things in the Ten Commandments of, of uh, meeting is do not mention sex. Do not mention sex. Do not mention sex, period. Okay. Don't look at her tits. Don't look at her ass. And don't look at any other women while you're talking to her. That's all there, and it's probably still good to this day. Don't mm -hmm. mention sex. YouTube seeing each other naked then, huh? <laughs> it, the, 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 the first thing he said to us after he said his name, and I was like, okay, that is horrible. I've never heard anything like that. Usually it's a little later down the line. Like, at least we've been talking a while. Or like, you're drunk at a party. Or you're, and you're drunk at, yeah. And there's in the kitchen. It's of course. It's sometimes, uh, yeah. And sometimes it happens. It's funny, too, sometimes. Yeah. It, yes. There's There are times and places for it. And also there's there are times where people go out and, like, that's all they really want. And that's, and that's totally fine. Like people should go and have fun and do what they want to do. But like, I think if you're looking to date, like, I just always think like things shouldn't be forced. Yes. Like, and if it comes up in the conversation, it comes up in the conversation, it's fine, but don't bring it up as a way to like suggest something. I'm like, if it's going to happen, trust me, it'll happen. Like, well, they have this really weird idea in pickup artistry that if you plant an idea in the person's head early on, then no. you can amplify it later, and you'll switch their focus from here to being naked. <laughs> Nobody really does that. I mean, no. it's a technique in therapy called uh, neuro-linguistic programming. Oh, yes. Invented by a famous uh, therapist in Arizona, and it was ripped off by a bunch of uh, con artists it got into the pickup artist world, and they think it really works. It doesn't really work. It's nonsense. The essence was, I had to learn it. If you want the client to talk about his brother, talk about your brother. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, the think, you're the therapist, and you're thinking, well, I think there's a problem here with the brother. I'm just guessing from whatever he's saying. And then you say, well, you know, my brother and I used to get into fights all the time about who, whose turn it was to cut the cake. And blah, 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 and then relax, and maybe he'll talk about his brother. That's what it's about. It doesn't really mean programming someone to do what you want. It's nonsense. I, yep, agreed. I mean, car salesmen use it. Uh, real estate salesmen use it. Anyone who's trying to manipulate you uses mm -hmm. it, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, let me make a big general caveat. It's the greatest invention of the entire evolution is sex. Okay, everything else is second. Right. Period. That's the end of that. Air, water, food, <laughs> sex, security, love, self-actualization. Psychology 101, the seven steps of what you need. No air, everything's unimportant. No food, everything's unimportant. No sex, you're not real worried about security when you're not getting laid. So what? you spend money you shouldn't be spending on the mm -hmm. wrong stuff. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's Maslow's hierarchy. Yes. Yes. And that's just the way we're built. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sex is very important, but it's it not is. the it's end. It's not. Yeah, I agree with that. Yep. But it is important. Here's a couple more psychological bits. You can have love without, you can't have love without sex, but you can have sex without love. 
Okay, and what you said about, I did want to say one other thing. Guys don't understand. They, they, these poor guys come to me, they're 30 years old, they've never had a girlfriend, and they want to get married. And I tell them, it's a long way from where you are to finding somebody to marry, okay? And let me tell you about falling in love. Falling in love is just happens. The first thing that happens is lust, and lots and lots and lots of lust. About the third or fourth week of lusty sex, it turns from evolutions built this in to turn it into love. All the orgasms create oxytocin in your brain and it's a yes. bonding chemical mm -hmm. and you bond. Yep. And you don't get to choose to fall in love. Even worse, you don't get to choose to stop being in love. Mm -hmm. It comes when it wants and it goes when it wants and there's not yeah. a fucking thing you can do about it. Now guys don't like to hear that. They think, well, if she's this age and that level of IQ and this level of this and that, I'll love her. No, you won't. You won't love her until you feel a lot of trust, a lot of caring, genuine caring, a lot of openness, then maybe. <laughs> the lust isn't there, nothing's going to happen. I, nothing. Yeah, I, that's true. As much as you want it to happen, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I wanted to get that point, but I just run into it so many times. No, I think that is a good point. The girls all tell the guys, the guys are there and they've uh, gone through from zero to maybe they're up to about if uh, if uh, Red Butler's a 10 in the right attitude, these guys are about a six. And they're having a really lovely, lustful relationship with a girl. And they come to the workshop <coughs> and they say, <coughs> excuse me to the girls, how do I know when I'm in love? Right, these are 20 to 20 year, 22, 20 to 22 year old girls, sometimes even 18 to 35. It just depends on what my mood is when I'm hiring. Right. There's a whole bunch of them. And every one of them has said the same thing. Same thing my grandmother told me when I was 14. I said, how do I know I'm in love, Grandma? She said, I don't know, you just know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the girl said it even better, if you have to ask, you're not. Yep. Yeah. And I said, boy, that's the shortest, quickest route to the whole end of the whole thing I ever heard. I know. And for something so big and important, right? It just I know. But you want to be the guys want to be in love. They want to have a wife. Of course. They want to live the fairy tale dream. Uh -huh. I'm serious. I still would like to yeah. do that. Some part of me back here says, boy, yeah. Oh yeah, everyone everyone does a little. Yeah. So As, as many times I've had my ass kicked, I've, it's probably it's probably beaten down to a very small part of my, my value system. But I, yeah. I I probably can't say truthfully that I would get married again. I can't say I can't say that. I just I couldn't do it. Three times three three times two times too many. Mm. 